Stay connected to your community and save. Just 99 cents a month gets you three months of unlimited access to Inform.com. Visit Inform.com slash subscribe and get your first three months of news for only 99 cents a month. Sometimes I feel pressure to bring fabulous dishes to gatherings, but lately I'm opting for easy. Inspired by my sweet tooth, a newlywed frozen pie and my undying love for Taco John's. Hi, this is Tracy Briggs, and welcome to Back Then. Well, maybe I'm getting lazy in my old age. No, not maybe. I am. Or if I want to give it a little PR spin, perhaps it's more with age comes wisdom. In other words, why work harder when easier will do? That very thought came to my mind when I was trying to decide what to bring to our annual Forum Newsroom potluck a couple of weeks ago. I opted for an easy recipe. I hesitate to even call it a recipe, in fact. It's so easy, it's embarrassing. Just three simple ingredients put together in a matter of minutes. However, this simple hack has met with better reviews than more complicated recipes I brought to potlucks over the years, and it was an even better choice than other easy options I've tried. I created them myself. I invented this recipe. Thank you very much. I call them chocolate sea salt caramel smashers. Now, for those who hate scrolling to the bottom of the page for the recipe or even waiting till the end of the podcast here for the recipe, here is the gist of it. And seriously, it's not really even a recipe. It is chocolate digestive biscuits topped with cookie butter and a crushed sea salt caramel. That is it. That is the entire recipe. At the end of the podcast, I'll, I will get into more specifics, but I wanted to tell you a little bit more about the origin of this treat and how it evolved from my insatiable sweet tooth, a frozen newlywed pie, and my weird obsession with Taco John's. Now, going back a ways, normally for potlucks, I might bring a nice shredded turkey breast in a slow cooker or a flavorful shrimp dip or maybe a mac and cheese. But after the busy fall and Christmas season I had, the thought of hauling a hot crock pot full of whatever across the icy street into the form building just seemed like a little too much to take. I said I was lazy, right? And this laziness appears to be becoming a trend. I did a story a couple of years ago about how I simplified Christmas by making a super easy spaghetti on Christmas Eve dinner. It really was great, and I do recommend you check out that story. It's not just spaghetti out of the jar, by the way. It's it's a recipe that takes a little effort, but certainly a lot easier than some of the elaborate Christmas Eve dinners I made. You can find that story. It's in a link in this story on Inform, so you can find it that way. Or you can just Google Briggs, colon, the best thing I ever did to simplify Christmas, and you will find that recipe. So I digress. Perhaps... It's less about being lazy for this potluck dish than about having scary flashbacks to my great indoors years. Now, if you might remember, The Great Indoors was a column and online video series I wrote a few years back where we celebrated the finer things between four walls. For me, that often meant a lot of time-consuming, elaborate baking. I included photos of some of these more elaborate dishes in the column here on Inform, so check out those pictures. But I will tell you, one was a, they were pop bottle cakes, so they actually look like authentic pop bottles. I fooled a lot of people with these. These are pretty cool cakes. I did a, a cake that was made to look like a stack of pancakes. I did a Paul Bunyan kind of lumberjack cake. And just a couple of years ago, I did a Christmas Mindac Shark Coot. I'll say that again. <laughs> a Christmas Mindac Shark Oofta Reboard. Get it? Oofta board? So it was a charcuterie board made of a lot of Midwestern items. All of these dishes were really challenging to make, but fun. But they were also a ton of work. You see, while I made some of these dishes at home, often it meant bringing everything into the form building for the photo and video shoots. So if you were ever driving near our offices, that was not a pack mule. You saw hauling food, crockpots, pans, dishes, and utensils across First Avenue. It was me. So I didn't feel like reliving my pack mule day. So I pondered, what could I bring to the forum newsroom potluck that won't put me at risk of slipping on the ice, a hot crockpot full of mac and cheese crushing and burning me as it lands on my head? 
In addition to being lazy, by the way, I might be a little dramatic. So I thought about something I brought to a potluck around 2016 when my kids were doing theater at Morehead High School. We theater parents were asked to bring our dish to the high school at 5 o'clock. But because I worked until 5 o'clock, that was kind of hard to do. So I took what I thought was the easy and totally yummy way out. I stopped at Taco John's and ordered a bunch of six pack and a pound combos. Now you remember those, right? You could get um, six tacos, whether they were hard shell or soft shell, and then a bunch of potato olays. My mouth is watering just thinking about it. Of course, the kids loved it, despite dodging some smoke when one of the paper taco wrappers got a little overheated in the food warmer. Nonetheless, it was a good, easy choice and Moorhead High did not burn to the ground. But alas, as we all know, Taco John's is no more in Fargo, Moorhead. I can't even talk about it. The depth of my sadness is real. Again, you can just Google uninformed Taco John's and you're gonna have a bunch of, of stories come up, including my my love of, of Taco John's since before I was pregnant and how it was a complete craving with both of my pregnancies. Okay, again, that's just way too sad to talk about, so I'll move on. So I couldn't bring the Taco John's to the potluck, so maybe I could think of another easy recipe, one that I made in the earliest days of my marriage, something that came to be known in our house as frozen newlywed pie. It was a pie I made where I mixed either vanilla frozen yogurt or frozen um, or ice cream, vanilla ice cream, and raspberry frozen yogurt or raspberry sherbet, just mix those things together and plopped it into a graham cracker crust. That was it. But my new husband thought it was the best thing ever. Of course, he was either trying to be complimentary to his new bride, or I think it says something about how he ate in his bachelor days. I spent hours making recipes from the Great British Baking Show that weren't as tasty or popular as that silly frozen pie. When my kids were little, they liked a similar easy dish, called Take Me to the Lake Ice Cream. It's made with just four ingredients, whipped cream, sweetened condensed milk, vanilla extract, and food coloring. And again, I have this recipe on the story as well, but you can find any, if you just Google recipes for sweetened condensed ice cream, it's it, it's super easy. I'm, I'm surprised I don't do it more often. So I thought, well, you know, maybe I could bring the newlywed frozen pie or the Take Me to the Lake Ice Cream to the potluck. They were easy, but I figured they'd both make a huge mess sitting out all afternoon. Sticky raspberry sherbet and sky blue ice cream melting all over Mike McFeely's lasagna, or I should say Mike McFeely's wife's lasagna. He did share the recipe with me. It was totally yummy. And it might also get over John Lamb's slow cooker full of pulled pork. And, you know, it would just be a whole thing. And who needs the cleanup? No, I wanted an even easier dish than that. So Taco John's was out. The newlywed frozen pie was out. What was a lazy woman to do? Then I thought of a sweet treat I eat at least a couple of times a week. I came up with this creation because of a fatal character flaw I have. I must have something a little sweet after every meal. Now, it doesn't need to be a crazy big dessert, just a piece of chocolate or a piece of candy. It's like a little internal bell that signals my taste buds that mealtime is over. So, One of the things I do is grab a Sanders dark chocolate sea salt caramel. I usually get them at Costco, but you can also get them at Hornbacher's or I think Amazon even has them. That's usually enough to satisfy my sweet tooth. But one day I just wanted something a little more. That's when I found a package of McVitie's dark chocolate digestive biscuits in my cabinet. Now, while that sounds like health food, it is not. It is a delicious, not overly sweet British cookie, similar to a chocolate coated graham cracker, but not, not quite. The name digestive, by the way, comes from the inventors, two Scottish doctors in 1839 who believed the baking soda in the cookies would aid digestion. And of course, anybody who watches the Great British Baking Show knows that biscuits are what Brits call cookies. Also in my cabinet, I found Biscoff Crunchy Cookie Butter. If you're not familiar with cookie butter, oh my goodness, you are in for a treat. I love it. It's like a peanut butter, but it's made with crumbled up Biscoff cookies. Biscoff is the brand name for Speculose cookies, which are spiced gingerbread short crust cookies first made in Belgium many, many years ago. If you've taken a flight on Delta Airlines, you've probably had one. They are the complimentary cookies that Delta provides to their passengers. 
So I simply spread that Biscoff cookie butter on top of the digestive biscuit, smash the caramel, and then place the smashed caramel on top of the cookie butter coated cookie. I kept this little secret recipe to myself because, well, let's face it, it was kind of embarrassing. Like, really, Tracy, you are such a sugar fiend that you can't just grab a cookie or a little piece of candy when you want something sweet. You have to do a mashup. And aren't your potluck friends and colleagues worth more than that? Well, of course they are. But again, lazy. So I decided to be an underachiever this time around and just whip up my chocolate sea salt caramel smashers for everyone. Sometimes I think it's okay to just give 70%, right? And my coworkers seem to agree. That silly little mashed up cookie I made in about two minutes received better reviews than some of my very elaborate dishes. It was Tammy Swift, the queen of fabulous food herself, who encouraged me to write a column about it. And by the way, this is a side note, and he might edit this out. Chris Kurzman, who edits these podcasts, brought the best dish of the day. It was a smoked pulled pork. It was wonderful, and he said he worked on it till 1.30 in the morning. So he gets kudos for making the best dish of the day that was way more work than mine. Even though I'm sure you are tempted to edit it out, please don't. Okay, so back to my sea salt smashers. I'm sure other people have smashed these items together previously, but you know what? I've never seen a copyrighted or trademarked recipe. So of course, you know what I'm going to do next. I will look for investors to finance the construction of a factory to manufacture Lazy Tracy's chocolate sea salt caramel smashers. They will sell smashingly well. And Hershey's, Mars, or Nabisco will buy me out. I will be the next dot of Dot's pretzels and hobnob with other brilliant entrepreneurs. The Smashers will be available at convenience stores everywhere, and I will count my millions while eating them on my private beach in Bimini. Okay, maybe not. Chocolate sea salt caramel Smashers will probably still just be manufactured in my kitchen for me alone or for others next time I'm feeling lazy before a potluck. If nothing else... I might just never have to carry a hot crock pot across an icy street again. And that is back then for this week. I hope you join me next time. Get reliable and accurate local news with Inform.com. Inform.com is your trusted local news source with journalists dedicated to keeping you informed about what's happening in your community. Visit Inform.com now.